Good morning um, and welcome for the, fir for the next 15 minutes, welcome to the North. My name's Andy and as well as being a Citizen North volunteer, I'm also, for my sins, the Secretary of the Lancaster and District Heritage Group and I do apologise for showing that picture so early in the morning. <laughs> uh, it's a small but very active community group who were formed in 2014 and over the last two years we've carried out several heritage and archaeological projects working not only with Citizen but with other groups such as uh, Morecambe Bay Partnership who's represented by Louise at the back there, uh, UCLan which is the University of Central Lancashire and of course National Trust who own quite a bit of the, the property in, in the Morecambe Bay area. In October 2016 Several members of our group, LDHG, were among other volunteers given the opportunity to carry out a walkover condition survey of a National Trust coastal property called Rectory Woods. Um, originally, Rectory Woods was the gardens of the local rectory, but later became virtually a pleasure garden and was redesigned in about 1753 by, by James Fenton, who planted lots of uh, fruit trees. And, and, other, and terracing, so it looks, it looks really nice. Um, it's a lovely view out over the North Yeah, the North Sea? Oh God, I'm on the wrong... The Irish Sea. Yeah. Irish Sea. <laughs> so I'm stood the wrong way around, you see. <laughs> For those of you who don't know where Hesham is, and I obviously don't know where the uh, North Sea is, <laughs> it's that little red dot there. It's on the northwest coast, on the edge of Morecambe Bay, and it's between the larger towns to the north of Morecambe and to the south of Fleetwood. Uh, the village can date its origins back as a settlement to the Stone Age. The project we were involved in in 2016 was designed to update the existing records done by Lancaster University Archaeological Unit in 1999, that's now defunct and it's Oxford Archaeology North, and again by Arrowsmith who carried out a survey in 2016. Ooh. Um, as, w as well as this, the volunteers were given the opportunity to learn archaeological skills such as using handheld GPS, how to record buildings um, using various methods, sketching, um, measuring photography, in order, that was an innovative idea of how to measure a high wall. <laughs> Stick the end of your tape on a ranging pole and hold, hold it up. Um, unfortunately, it didn't work there. Um, this, this will give the, the report that, that came from this will give the landowners, National Trust, um, a greater understanding of their site and also of any uh, features, archeological features, within that site and they can take steps to protect, conserve or, or do what they want with it. In addition to the, the surveying work at Rectory Woods, some of the volunteers also had a chance to do some surveying inside St Patrick's Chapel, the ruins of St Patrick's Chapel, uh, a scheduled monument uh, and again a coastal site that's, that's in real risk of, of falling into the sea because of land erosion. Um, that's uh, Megan with a couple of the volunteers showing them how to record and draw some of the some of the features in there, but it's also the home to the rare stone cut graves. Now these are believed to date back to about the 10th century, and they're well worth a visit if uh, if you're ever up north. However, coastal erosion, as you can see. The, the sea is pretty close to the coastline there. Coastal erosion is taking its toll on, on the, the graves and it's only really a matter of time be before they, they do end up going into the sea. I'm not sure what the National Trust policy on, on sort of like lifting them and making them safe would be, uh, but it would be a shame if they, if they were lost. My role in the project Oh, oh, that's the wrong one. My role in the project was to take the photographs of the boundary wall 
from rec of Rectory Woods. Dead simple. Not, not, not a difficult job. Off a drop with a camera, set of ranging poles, tape measure. Brilliant. I thought, I can't possibly get this wrong. Oh, no. By lunchtime, I'd completed the, the, the whole of the, the outside wall and had started on the inside. And I was, I, was I was feeling pretty pleased with myself. So at lunchtime, I went back in and sat with Louise. I said, oh, I've done the pictures. Do you want to have a look? She, she said, yeah, great. So I showed them her, and she just smiled. And she said, nice pictures of ranging poles, but where's the top of the wall? It, in my haste and my cockiness, I'm, I'm, I'd completely missed the wall off above the height of the ranging pole, so the, the photographs were absolutely useless. Um, so, as a, as a result of that, I spent the afternoon retracing my steps and having another go. A nice picture, but too much grass. I'm getting there, but one of the ranging poles wasn't level. At long last, I've done it. And we, we now have a fantastic set of photographs that we'll hopefully we'll be able to use to tell any differences, any changes in the heights of the wall due to subsidence, any collapse, or, or anything like that. Um, during this, this survey, a new and previously unrecorded structure was found. I won't use the word ritual, because I know it's... It's the, the bit marked in red. It was a semicircular uh, sort of affair that seemed to be attached to the external wall of, of, of Rectory Woods. Unfortunately, as you can see, the, the grass is pretty long and the, shrub, the, the vegetation was quite dense, so we weren't able at that time to, to carry out much of a survey other than to just photograph it, make a note of where, where it was, and hopefully to come back... Uh, later. Rectory Woods, the, sur the survey, proved to be a great success, and whilst not fully complete in the time that was available, much valuable information was found for the, for the Landowners National Trust, and volunteers learnt a load of new skills. It also, more importantly I think, provided a stimulus for a project to carry on later, later in the year. So, in February, I thought I spelt February wrong for a minute then. Uh, in February 2017, the opportunity for another citizen training project arose. Again, based in Hesham, uh, but this time not just working alongside Hesham, uh, sorry, Citizen, uh, Morecambe Bay Partnership, and the National Trust. We also worked with Durham Archaeological. Archaeological Services, Durham University. Um, and the project was divided into three strands. Firstly, the 2016 survey work was, was carried on with and completed inside Rectory Woods and um, in St Patrick's Chapel. The second strand of investigation involved Durham Archaeology Unit carrying out a ground-penetrating radar survey in the graveyard of St Peter's Church. Um, it's a lovely little church, and, but the graveyard, as with much of that coastline, is at severe risk from, from coastal erosion. Um, and Durham Archaeology were, were engaged to carry out the survey to detect grave, any, any grave slabs um, so that they could be recorded just in case the, the worst happened. Again, volunteers were given the chance to have a go. Uh, this hands-on GPR survey, or pushing the pram, as they call it. So, so that, was, that was very interesting. The third and final strand, and the one I was involved with, um, was looking at the un, undefined structure, which had now been given the title Citizen Building 307. Much, much better, I suppose, than that pile of stones that's on, attached to the wall. Unlike, however, the weather in October, which was really nice, the weather on the uh, west coast of, of England 
Oh, that's the now cleared structure. I think it's a bit more apparent now. Thanks to the National Trust, they cut the grass and removed the vegetation for us. The weather in February on the northwest coast is not the friendliest. And despite this, and a last minute change of base, because a tree had gone through the roof of our original base, so we had to find another one. Uh, the volunteers turned up to do what they had to do, and, and they produced a load of really good, good work and good information. As I said, I worked on Building 307 with uh, Louise from Morecambe Bay and Karen and Peter, two of the volunteers. We then we undertook a full survey of the, of the structure. It was fully recorded, measurements were taken, drawings made, photographs taken, but not by me, and levels were recorded. But we really, uh, some nice drawings there by, I think they're Louise's. No. Um, and at the end, we, we produced a report for uh, the National Trust, which hopefully will um, inform further work in, in, in the future. All, I think it's fair to say that the, the two citizen projects I've spoken about this morning were a great success and produced some valuable information. And all of the volunteers that I've spoken to have said they had a fantastic time and learn new skills and learn more about the area where they're living. So a lot of them weren't aware of the severity of the coastal erosion and, and just what a risk it is. Um, they, they said that they had a great time, learned new skills, and certainly in the case of members of my group that, that attended, they've been able to transfer those skills into our own projects. Um, and we now have quite, quite a few who are quite competent drawers and recorders. Um, so that, that's all, all benefit. It's, it's abundantly clear to me, anyway, that the time and the efforts put into the planning and running of these projects by Andy, Megan and Stephanie with, from, from Citizen um, with the local support and local knowledge of Louise from Morecambe Bay has paid great dividends in terms of outcomes achieved and the level of community engagement. I would, and I do urge anybody who gets the chance to volunteer and work with Citizen. I know that I and the members of my group have benefited greatly from our participation and we look forward to more projects next year. Thank you.